you have to be able to see. This is, did the universe begin by chance or by God's creation? That's the essence of it. The universe began either from nothing, by nobody, to everything, or from nothing, by God, to everything. That's really the only two possibilities. It either happened just by accident or it happened because God planned it that way. Well, let's come to questions, questions. Can science answer them? Can science answer all questions? No. Science can answer some questions. It can determine what this pew is made of, how my body functions, how that TV camera works, but it can't tell us what's the meaning of life? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Science can never answer that question. Why can't it answer that question? Because that question is beyond the realm of science. So when we deal with science, we've got to deal with things in the present. Now what I'm going to do now, for the next couple minutes, is sketch the two models. And I put this up on purpose so that we get a grasp on this. I want to sketch two models. I want to sketch evolution and I want to sketch creation. And I want to sketch it in this way. I'm sketch evolution as Darwin proposed it, and I'll talk about some of the modern variants of that. And I want to sketch creation as I would say, recent creation, creation several thousand years ago in six literal days. That's where I come from. And I'm going to sketch those two models on purpose, and then we're going to pull the science in and see where the science leads us. Evolution. In the beginning, an explosion. And from that explosion comes everything you see. First hydrogen gas, then elements, then compounds, then dead chemicals, then dead chemicals come alive, and the living cells now become trained into every kind of living thing that we see on the Earth. So it begins with an explosion and results in us. We could be so-called sons of hydrogen gas, if you like, or possibly a grown-up germ. But that's essentially what evolution tells us. That has, that has a lot of impact when we deal with the consequences of these ideas. Creation says, no, from day one, from the very beginning, there was order in the universe, and that order came from an intelligent mind. It's an uphill process, evolution, things are increasing, things are getting better, we're seeing new creatures come into existence all the time. Or creation says, no, a perfect world rebelled against the creator, and as a result fell, and that process is a continuous decline that will eventually result in the complete destruction of mankind in judgment. It's an accident, accidental process, a process that happens over long periods of time, or there's a plan or a design from the moment of creation. It's uniform. The rate at which things happen is the same in the past as it is today, or there's a catastrophic process, Noah's flood, that changes the face of this planet. It's an old Earth. Let's try this. How many people are in the workshop today? I'm only giving you one chance at this, okay? The Earth is billions of years old. Were you there? Very good. Thank you. Or the Earth is young, thousands of years old. And finally, we are either ape men descended from apes, or we are men descended from Adam. Those are the two possibilities. Okay, let's sketch those two models quickly. In this society, there's a concept that says that most people believe in evolution because most people believe in evolution because most people believe in evolution. It's kind of a, an idea that that's true. That's not the case, in fact, but there's an idea that that's true. Yet, many scientists, and not just Christians and Jews, many scientists, including some evolutionists, in fact, evolutionists don't agree what happened, when it happened, or why it happened. You understand that? They don't agree on that at all. There's two very different schools of thought in evolution as to how, why, and when. But anyway, many scientists reject it because it has major flaws. 